Hi, my name is John. Uh, today we're going to be I'm going to be showing you how to convert a fat bike wheel to tubeless. Um, just a little background. This is my fat back fat bike built in Alaska. It has uh, big fat Larrys on 90 millimeter rims. So these are four and a half inch wide tires with 90 millimeter rims, which is pretty much the biggest fat bike wheels and tires you can get. Uh, the fat back is made of aluminum, and uh, I bought it uh, pre-built from fat back. It got shipped all built. I just had to put the front wheel and the handlebars on. Uh, the bike is a seven by nine. It's a two by seven drivetrain, but it's built with a three by nine drivetrain that they take some gears off to make it two by seven, so that way they clearance they can clear the big fat Larry tires. And uh, I tested it out a couple times and it works really great. The only thing I don't like is getting flats with the tubes. So I uh, converted the rear tire to tubeless last night in about three hours of trial and error. And I figured out what works really good and what doesn't work at all. And tonight I'm going to show you how to convert easily the front tire, hopefully. Right, so this is what you're going to need to convert your fat bike rims to tubeless. Uh, first thing you need is the stands tubeless sealant. Um, then you're going to need a small bottle of it or an injector, which I'll show you why later. Uh, next you're going to need some tubeless valve stems. Uh, I picked these up. These are uh, American Classic tubeless. I'm trying out for the first time. And uh, they're kind of interesting because um, if you look, they have a big rubber o-ring on the bottom of it. So it really helps to seal up against the rim, which is what, probably the hardest part of getting tubeless tires to seal well, is getting the valve to seal. And um, I like to use removable valves instead of the big valve that are built into the tape that goes around the rim. Because if you ever do get a flat, you can just take out the valve and put a tube in without having to take all your rim tape off in the middle of the wood. And then you can, when you get home, it's much easier to convert it back to tubeless. But if you do get a flat running tubeless, make sure you check the tire for thorns and nails and stuff. So I've seen people get tubeless flats, put a tube in, and then they're almost instantly flat again because whatever guy gave them a flat the first time wrecks their tube also. Uh, next thing you're going to need is some tubeless tape. Uh, as you can see, this is absolutely gigantic tubeless tape. Uh, I bought it from Fatback. This is the same uh, stands tape that they sell in the store that's only this big for the mountain bike rims. But... Uh, uh, the company Fatback orders it a giant roll of it and they get it cut down special to fit on their rims to go tubeless. Uh, next thing you need is a pair of tire levers, which are to take the tire off. Then uh, also a soldering iron or something you can heat up and push through because uh, what you want to do is make a really clean uh, melt hole through the, uh, for the valve stem. So that way it's, it can seal really well, because if you use a knife, then it's jagged. But if you melt it with a soldering iron, you get a really nice hole. And the last thing you're going to need is a can of flammable, a flammable aerosol can uh, and a pack of matches. And you'll get to see why later. Um, I got a uh, carburetor cleaner, works really well. But you can also use hairspray or uh, WD-40 or um, starter fluid. Pretty much anything that comes in an aerosol can is labeled extremely flammable, works great. Alright, so a couple things I forgot to mention. We are also going to need a tool for removing the valve stem on your tubeless valve stem. And I also forgot to mention that you, you're going to need a, a tubeless valve stem that has a removable core for the way that I the, the way that you do this. Other mountain bike tubeless rooms you might not need it, but this one you're definitely gonna either gonna need a removable valve core or something, some way to inject the fluid through the valve stem. Uh, another thing you're going to need is either a pump, an air, a, uh, air compressor or a pump. Now, the way I set my tire up last night, I don't, I didn't, I used a regular hand pump. But uh, most of the time, when you set up tubeless tires, you probably usually need an air compressor. And if you have an air compressor, you're also going to need the uh, Schrader depressor valve adapter for your air compressor if you don't have one.
Alright, so when you're putting this tape on, the really important thing that you want to do is you don't want to get wrinkles around the edges of the tape. You want to, you want to put as smooth as you can on the edges. Wrinkles in the middle don't matter at all because the, the air is not going to get in through here. Where the air is going to get in through is when you have wrinkles on the edges. So it's really hard to put this tape down without wrinkling it all up, but you want to try to get you want to try to get a nice smooth even coat on the edges and leave the wrinkles in the middle. Alright, so after you put your tape on, you push it all down real good and you uh, melt your hole for your uh, valve stem. The next thing you want to do is you want to put the inner tube and the tire back on and reinflate the thing to full, to full size. Uh, the reason for doing that is two reasons. The first one is you want to seat the bead on at least one side of the tire to make it much easier so you only have to seat the bead on the other side. And the other reason is uh, the inner tube also helps push down really evenly and smoothly all the rim tape. Alright, now the next step is to install your tubeless valve stem. All right, now for the fun part. Here is where I ran into a lot of trouble last night. Seating the bead on this tire is really, really hard to do. And I tried for a couple hours, I used a ratchet strap, tried to compress it, I used an air compressor, I tried to fill it up and jiggle it so I could get the bead to seat with the air compressor going, and after a couple hours I just couldn't get it. So, the only way I successfully was able to seat the bead was I had to resort to using an old redneck trick um, of uh, flammable uh, aerosol and matches. And uh, with a bit of science, what happens is the air expands very rapidly inside it and it pops the bead into place. And uh, it's much easier to see than it is to explain. So we're gonna... Also a disclaimer, uh, this worked on my rim. Uh, it didn't do any damage. It didn't uh, wreck anything. But I have absolutely no idea if this is safe for your rim, your tire, the tape, or the fluid inside it. And this is a strictly do-at-your-own-risk kind of thing. I have absolutely no idea if this is bad for anything. So this is totally up to you if you actually want to do this method. Alright, that was fun. So, after you seat the bead, you can uh, go ahead and fill the tire up with a little bit of air to help the bead get all nice and really well seated after you use the explosion method to seat it. Alright, so after you seated the bead and you fill the tire up, you can uh, see that you did a pretty good job of taping the rim because the tire is actually holding air just fine without any sealant. But uh, once the first thorn prick you get, it's going to not hold air anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the valve stem out and we're going to put uh, some sealant in. Now whenever you dispense sealant out of the big bottle, you want to use the little nozzle here. And what you want to do is you want to flip it completely upside down when you're pouring because the uh, fluid will uh, congeal at the top, so you want to take it from the bottom of the bottle. Alright, so after you uh, put
put the stands in. Notice I use three bottles worth, or it's equivalent to three scoops. Uh, I put four scoops in the back tire, and I think it was too much because it's really heavy. Uh, I think three scoops should be enough, but uh, I'm going to trial and error and see how it goes. Uh, after you fill the tire up with some air, you want to put more air than you actually run, so that way you can kind of get the stands to seal, and then you do the uh, tube wobble, the, the tire wobble to get the stands to flow into all the little crevices that didn't quite get sealed by the tape. All right, so that's about it. Uh, front tire is holding air good. Back tire is still holding a tremendous amount of air I put in it last night. And uh, everything's looking good. Uh, I don't hear any leaks. And um, that's about it. The last step in the process is the most fun. You're going to want to take your bike out for a nice, long, bumpy ride. So you can slosh all the stands around to get it to go into all those little crevices and all the imperfections so it seals up real nice overnight. Uh, one last thing I want to say about the stand state is I really like the stand state. Uh, it works really well, it's really light, and it seals really good. However, it's really expensive. It is probably the most expensive tape option you can get when taping your rings. Uh, if you want to save some money, I hear Gorilla Tape also works really well. Uh, I've also heard Duct Tape works good, but uh, I hear the Gorilla Tape is a little bit more coarse. Uh, to give you a good idea how well the stance tape works, is I have the same tape in my mountain bike here, and it holds air better than, than any of my inner tube bikes do. So that's why I like the stance tape. I hope you learned something. Uh, I know I certainly learned a lot doing this version. I hope you can. Uh, benefit from all my mistakes. So uh, go for a ride and I will see you on the trail.